No, this isn't Game of Thrones. So I thought I would do a long-term review of my 2015 Yamaha FZ07, also known as the MT07. So I've got about 1,450 miles on it now. I've had one service on it. I'm going to have the second service here pretty soon. And. Uh, done quite a few different modifications to the bike, but I really want to talk about the bike as it is uh, without the modifications first. Uh, first off, big question a lot of people have is, is it a good first bike? Well, based on the size and the, uh, the you know, nimbleness and lightweight and everything, I think it could be a very good first bike, um, depending on the rider. If you do not know what you're doing on a motorcycle, then I would suggest going with something a little bit smaller. But if you're responsible, willing to uh, put in the time to learn a little slower, then you can definitely get this bike and be happy with it for years to come. It uh, does have quite a bit of low end torque. Has no problem at all pulling the uh, front wheel up in first or second gear. Some people might even get it up in third, but uh, I find that it's a little bit more difficult to do. So yeah, if you're stupid on the throttle, you're going to let this bike get out of your uh, hands and, you know, going to have a bad day. But if you are responsible and know how to use this right hand correctly, you will be very happy with this motorcycle. It is very light. The seat is wonderful. Uh, if, even if you're a little bit on the short side, you can still put your feet down fairly easy because it is narrow in the front. And then it's wider in the back, so wide in the back for comfort, narrow in the front to uh, put your feet down easier. Also lets you hug the tank. So all in all, very easy to ride. What's also nice about it is the fact that it does have that good low end torque. If you're in the wrong gear, it's not going to be quite as bad. You know, if you're going around a corner, whether you're in second, third, fourth, doesn't matter that much. You're still going to have enough torque to pull, you know, strong enough through that corner. My wheels are probably a little bit cold still, but I, so I don't want to get too aggressive on this corner. At least I'm staying in the lane. Is this a good commuter? It can be. I will admit, when I first got the bike, what are you doing, man? With no windscreen, doing about 65, you'll start feeling a lot of air on your chest. And once you get up to about 70 or more, it actually feels like it wants to push you off the bike. I mean, it's a little uh, uncomfortable at first, but you can get used to it. I would not suggest doing that for, you know, an hour or plus ride. Now, as you see, I have a windscreen. I added the uh, GV windscreen. It is my favorite one on the motorcycle, mainly because I just think it looks really good. It's not too tall. doesn't ruin the lines of the bike or anything. And now I can go 70, 75, 80, and I don't feel like I'm getting pushed off at all. I still feel air, you know, up around my chin and higher. But it's definitely not something that, uh, you know, spoils the ride at all. It's still very, very comfortable. I can let go of the handlebars and not feel like I'm going to get blown away. So yeah, if you're going to commute long distances on the highway, I would suggest a windscreen. If you're commuting urban, around town, not really going above 70, you don't even need the windscreen. Uh, secondly, gas mileage. It is pretty awesome gas mileage for a bike with this kind of power. My 
uh, CBR 500 definitely had higher gas mileage, probably about 15 or so miles per gallon more. On this one, I average about 48 miles per gallon. And that's with me flogging it a little bit. I'm not really the easiest on the throttle. I definitely like to give it gas. So I'm definitely not thinking my fuel mileage as far as how I ride. I'm sure I could push it well over 50 miles per gallon if I was easier on the bike. taking this bike down to some twisty roads in Tennessee and I do think with my weight I'm about 215 with my weight the original dampening on or original preload on the rear shock which is set at three from the factory was a little bit on the soft side for me so I raced up to seven and felt very well planted very comfortable going through the twisties in the uh, Tennessee North Carolina area so as a first bike, definitely easy to um, work with. I do not like the stock mirrors. Um, about half of the mirrors are taken up with the uh, my shoulders. So I really couldn't see behind me too well. I could set it up well enough to see the lanes next to me, but I couldn't really see behind me very well. As you see, I switched to a bar end mirror. Got rid of the stock ones. And even though these are only three inch diameter mirrors, my view is so much better. I can definitely see behind me a lot easier and I just like the cleaner look of the uh, front here. Uh, let's see, what else about the bike? Um, as usual, you cannot expect very much storage under the seat. You know, no sport bike has a lot of storage under the, the rear pylon seat. That's just a given. You can usually put a pair of gloves, maybe your wallet, a phone, you know, just small essential items. Uh, most people end up, uh, might put their registration back there and, um, you know, maybe a, a fuel controller if they end up doing like a new exhaust or anything like that. Now I do have a new exhaust on this bike. I went with the Yoshimura fuel exhaust and I love it. I love the sound, I love the looks, and I really don't think I would be happy, you know, if I had saved the stock because it was just too quiet. It had a good sound to it, but it was very quiet. As you see, I'm passing cars and whipping around easier on the highway, no problem. And I'm in six. And I kind of consider six almost like an overdrive. Because uh, if you really want to get moving, you, you bump it down to fifth and you can take off like a rocket. Uh, I can easily hit a hundred and fourth or fifth. I haven't really tried it in third. Top speed on this bike, I don't know firsthand, but I've heard it's around 120. Might be able to get a little bit more out of that, depending on your uh, exhaust fuel setup. And also depending on if you uh, change like sprocket sizes or anything like that. service on this bike is about $200 from the dealer. I've heard people paying different prices, some people just doing it themselves. Um, I like to have the first service done at least at the dealer. I am somewhat mechanically inclined but when it comes to motorcycles I just feel like uh, you know if I have the money then I'd rather have a professional do the uh, work for me. see right now I'm cruising along about 72 and 6 and if I need to get going even in 6 gear it does not take long at all to accelerate I don't feel like this bike is made to be a highway commuter it really likes to uh, be on back roads and some twisties and such um, but it doesn't mean that it cannot handle that type of uh, riding doing 75 or so right now having no issue whatsoever feel very comfortable I can you know, be very light on the handlebars not getting blown away or anything I'm not even gripping the tank it's just very comfortable ride now one thing if you ever ride this bike and something you might hear about is the tremendous uh, 
engine braking. And I just came off the highway doing 70. I have not touched the brakes at all. There's no one behind me, so I'm going to show you. Granted, I'm going uphill now, but I mean, I just dropped down to about 10 miles an hour just by downshifting. Neither touching the brake at all. second gear doing you know roughly about 30 miles an hour or so if you give it full throttle it'll lift that wheel up pretty nicely now I did install an R6 throttle tube on mine so I have a little bit shorter throw to go to full throttle it's not as uh, tremendous of a change as I thought it would be based on how other people reviewed it but it's definitely more comfortable on the wrist. I don't have to go under the bar quite as much to uh, get a full throttle. And it was surprisingly easy to do. I was very careful when taking off the original grip. I had a set of replacement grips just in case I ruined it, but I didn't end up using them. And it took only about 15 minutes to do.